Hey there, everybody. If you've ever wanted to know how to open a door by pressing the E key or any other key on your keyboard once you're in range, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So there's this big door right here. You walk up to it, nothing happens. If you're close enough, hit the E key, opens up, stays open if you walk away, walk close, hit E key, comes down. And even if it's going up or down, you can hit the E key to change its direction. So I'm gonna show you right now how to set this up. So we're gonna take a look at mine really quick, my blueprint, and then we'll do it together. So I'm gonna open up this blueprint, and inside here you can see it's comprised of just a few different meshes. There's the door itself, which is a static mesh, so you would add a static mesh. A trigger, which is actually just a collision box, which you just search for collision, which we'll do in a second. The outside wall, which is optional. And then really what's happening is we're doing a check on the trigger to see if what's running into it is our character which we'll do. And if we get that, we can do what's called an enable input, which checks to see which player controller is within this trigger volume, which is player zero and a single player game would be us. And the same happens if we walk out, we don't let uh, inputs, basically keystrokes, get registered anymore. And then we fire this event called interact, which I'll show you in a second. We do what's called a flip flop, which is every time I press it, it either does A or B which plays this timeline forward or backwards. And then we set the door mesh, this one particular static mesh, set relative location. So at a high level, that's what's going on. And right now we'll go through and do it together. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna make my own blueprint. I'm going to right click in the content browser, blueprint class of type actor. I'm gonna type in BP, um, let's call it door, um, you're gonna probably name it like Dora one. I'll, do, I'll name one Dora one. And then I'm gonna open this up. You're gonna take whatever mesh you have. So I'm gonna type in static mesh. Um, I'll just make something simple just so you can see how this works. Let's go with um, a box. Yeah, this'll do. Um, demo box mesh. Oh no, that is not what I want. Yeah, let's use a cylinder. This looks perfect. Okay, so if you have a door mesh, you can put it in right now. But now I have a static mesh under my node. Add a component. Let's go and find collision, box collision. It's gonna be a little small. I'm gonna hit the R key to rescale it. Just make it a little bit bigger. Compile, save. Now I'm gonna just drag it into my scene real fast. So this is acting as my new door that's going to animate. The thing we wanna make sure we do is we kind of come to edit, uh, project settings, and then under input, we want to click this little plus sign. And once you do that, you're going to get this new little option that pops down here. You're going to name it interact, and then you're going to pull this drop down, search for the letter E, and then just scroll down until you find where it just says E by itself. And that's going to be the button we use to interact. You can set this to anything you want. And this is this the name we're going to call inside of our blueprint. So just remember, interact. So now that we have this set up, I'm gonna open up my blueprint. Inside here, I'm gonna just left click, drag, delete these. I'm gonna take this box, which is our collision. This is the thing that's gonna check. I'm gonna right click on it, add event, on begin overlap, right here like that. I'm also gonna right click, add event, on component end overlap. So now I've got my start and my stop. I'm gonna see if the thing that overlapped me, which is the other actor, is the character I have. So we can do this together. Let's just do type character. So character is like the, the, the base class of all characters inside of Unreal, as long as you extend it from that. And I'm gonna control C, control V, just to copy this over, because it's gonna be about the same. And then off of this, I'm going to do enable input. And then the player controller, I'm just gonna get player controller, just like this. And then off this cast, we're gonna do disable, if I could spell, <laughs> disable input right here. And then control C, control V, put this in here. Okay, so now what we wanna do is that when now we have input, we can get the input. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click in here and we're gonna type in interact. If you remember, we set that up, hit enter. And now what we wanna do is we wanna make a timeline or actually, I'm gonna hook this up. Let's hook it up to a flip-flop. Type in flip-flop, like this. So now we're going to make 
a timeline. So just type in timeline, add timeline. Let's call it a door timeline. I'm gonna click A into play and B into reverse. Double click on timeline. We can um, we can do this a couple different ways. Let's do um, yeah, let's let's do it with a float track. That'll be less data. Let's call this uh, door um, move up. And however long we want the door to take to move up. So let's just say we want the door to be um, up in two seconds for the total length. Hit two and hit enter. You can see it shortened it down. And here I'm just going to right click um, and then add a key. And then I'm at the towards the end, I'm gonna right click, add a key, and then I'm gonna left click on this so it's orange. And then where it says time zero or with a bunch of decimals, I'm just gonna hit zero and hit enter. And then on this one down here, I'm gonna do the same, except on the first one, whatever your max time was, which we set the length of two, I'm gonna set it to two as well. And then its value, let's set it to uh, 200. And you'll see why I did that in a second. And then this graph is gonna look crazy. Um, it's basically gonna go like straight up and across. So basically in two seconds, 200 units will change. And um, yeah, so if now if we go back here, remember in our timeline, this thing, when we opened it up, we had named this track door move up. So coming out of door move up, it's basically over two seconds, a number will go from zero to 200, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do set relative um, position, transform, do, 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 and we're gonna set it on the static mesh. Perfect. Actually, I'm gonna do this a different way. Let me just double check what I did here. Set relative location, that's what I thought. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so we're gonna take, I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna take our static mesh, which we made over here. I'm gonna attach this. So real quick, what happened was when we made the collider, you'll see that if I, this little arrow next to static mesh, this box was under it. That means they're parented. So if the door were moved, the trigger moved. So what would be bad about that is if the door rose, we wouldn't be able to close anymore. So I'm just gonna left click, hold, and drag this up to the scene root, and then hit attach. So now those are deattached. So if you're running into that problem, there's a little quick fix. So again, we're gonna just double check what we had here before. Set relative location. So we're gonna grab our static mesh, left click, drag it in. Set relative location. Update. And then what I'm gonna do is on the new location, I'm gonna right click and split the structure into its key components because we don't really care. We want that to be the same. We just want to move up on the Z, just like that. Compile, save. And now we should be able to walk up to our circle. Hit E and it rises up 200 units over two seconds. Hit E again, it goes back down. And then again, if I walk up to it, hit E and walk away, it'll still finish and then it stays up. So this is useful as long as I'm inside that trigger volume. And you might be asking, how do I know I'm in it? Well, we can go to this collision and there's an option. Uh, let's just type in the top here. There's a search, visible um, render in game, hidden in game. So we just disable hidden in game, compile, save, hit play. And now you can see the box. So if you're ever thinking, uh, am I in the box? Is it working, not working? Now you can see how big the box is. So we can always make the, big, the box bigger or not and all that other stuff. So if this was helpful on how to make a door that opens and closes on a key press, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.